Wasn't that amazing? I, I'm just, wow, I'm still uh, just at all over all that, how that trans- transpired. And uh, I truly believe that it w- wasn't just an eclipse, uh, but I truly believe it was a defining moment in the church age. And we're not going to say a whole lot about that because we did enough of that last week. And Jared, you're behind. I think, it's, I think the message already has 220-something views. And so how many know people are getting interested? They're getting inquisitive about, hey, what's, what's going on? What does all this mean? And uh, speaking of the eclipse on Monday, you know, my brain is just always, always running. We were Friday night, all the family was over, and we were uh, in the living room watching the coverage of the hurricane. How many have seen Hurricane Harvey? It was Friday night, we were watching the, the coverage on the hurricane, and uh, the Lord just began to speak to me about some things, and so I started writing them down and started sharing them with our family. But isn't it interesting that four days after the eclipse, a Category 4 hurricane hits the coast of Texas. Landfall was made 30 miles north of a city called Corpus Christi. Does anybody know what Corpus Christi means? The body of Christ. 30 miles. How many know Jesus was 30 years old when he started his ministry? You say, Pastor Steve, what does all that mean? I don't know exactly what all I need. It means I just know this, that God is speaking. God is speaking. Uh, and as Jared said, don't forget next Sunday morning, the Allen family, and then we'll have uh, our potluck picnic over at the West Campus at 4 o'clock. So let's get into the Word. Today we are concluding our sermon series entitled Signs of the Times, and I hope you have enjoyed our series as much as I have. I love the end times, last days message. How many enjoy this subject? Don't you, though? And I'm very passionate about it, which I think you've probably figured that out by now. Uh, But what I want to do here today is to do a quick review, and then we're going to show a short little video. So as we close out this series, I want to go back and just hit on some of the things that I feel are important and that you might want to make sure you have in your notes and Brother Kevin, Brother Timmy, you can come and hand out these notes. Brother James, whoever can come and help here real quick. The title of the message this morning is simply this, the grand finale. Everybody say the grand finale. How many have ever been to the fireworks and they save the best for last? Man, just pow, 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 pow. We call it the grand finale. How many know when Jesus comes back to this earth, we're going to have a grand finale, baby? Wow. Wow. It's going to be a grand finale like this world has never seen. And uh, you think the start of this thing was something. Just wait till you see the, the end of this thing because it's going to be amazing. We're going to, we're going to behold the Lord coming in all of his glory, all of his majesty. And we said it a few weeks ago. This time he's not coming as Mary's little lamb, but he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah, as king of all kings and lord of all lords. The grand finale. So then as we get started here today, some might say, well, well why, why do we do all this? Why do we study? Why do we search? Why do we pray? Why are we looking? Why are we watching, as Pastor Tom was talking about? Because you can ask my wife. I am constantly uh, searching and looking and going over videos and just searching for anything, watching Christian television to see what I can find as it pertains to the last days. But I believe all that time and effort and energy that we put into this I believe it pays off. How many would say amen? And I think we have sufficient enough scripture to back up what we do. And so the question I want to ask this is, why do we put so much time, effort, and energy, and emphasis on a subject like the last days? Well, let's start out here in Proverbs chapter 25. Let's look at this here. Proverbs chapter 25, verse number 2. Look at this. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal. Everybody say conceal. It is the glory of God to conceal or hide a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. Now, I already hear somebody saying, well, that doesn't apply to me because I'm not a king. Well, can I tell you the truth is, if you're a born-again, spirit-filled believer, you are a king and a priest to the Lord. You minister to him, and you are a king and a priest. And so it is the glory of God to conceal or hide something But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. 
So remember this. God likes to hide things. Everybody say, God likes to hide things. God likes to hide things. And uh, he wants us to search for truth, and he wants us to search for him. If you write anything down today, you probably need to write that down right there. God likes to hide things. He wants us to search for truth, and he wants us to search for him. How many understand the Bible says, Knock, and it shall be open unto you. Seek, and you shall find. If we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. Amen? Look at this in 2 Timothy 2.15. This is why we study. This is why we put hours of preparation into these things and watch countless videos and see if we miss something, see, see what other people are hearing. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved. The King James says study. Everybody say study. Study to show yourself approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then Jesus said this over in John chapter 5, verse 39. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. How many know we have a no-so salvation? We don't have to just think we have eternal life, but how many understand we can know that we have eternal life? Okay, And so when it comes to the last days end time message, as a Christian, and especially as a pastor, I'm not going to sit back and let someone else do all my thinking for me. How many know it's dangerous to let somebody else do all your thinking for you? I'm not going to just sit back and let someone else do all the hard work, but I'm going to, to do what's required of me as a faithful steward. How many would say Amen. You see, when it comes to something as important as the close of a dispensation, I'm not just going to sit back and take the word of all the preachers and the pastors and come on somebody, turn on Christian television and let them do all the hard work for me. And I appreciate and I listen to Jack Van Empey. I listen to Perry Stone. I listen to John Hagee. Can I get some amens out there? I listen to Hal Lindsey. I, I listen to Irvin Baxter, but... Can I tell you, I just don't leave it all up to them. I will use them as references. I will use them as resources, but not as the ultimate authority. Not as the ultimate authority. Because uh, who is the best teacher anyway? How many understand the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, is the best teacher? It's not man, but it's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit isn't just the comforter, but he's the paraclete. One of the many jobs of the Holy Spirit is teacher and guide. How many understand the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you if you let him? There's the key right there. We've got to submit. We've got to yield. Everybody say yield. One of the biggest things in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is just yielding. Yield. Just yield to the Holy Spirit. And so that's why we spend hours and hours and hours praying, studying, watching videos, and listening, and so on. And then another reason why we stay in an attitude of prayer and listening, because how many understand prayer is communication? And how many understand communication is a two-way street? And sometimes we're bad about this as Christians. We are constantly talking when we're praying, but we don't stop and listen. How many know you're not having a conversation with God unless you give him time to talk back to you? How many believe that God is still speaking? He is still speaking. And let me say this. God doesn't just speak through his word, the Bible, the Logos, but he speaks through many different avenues. I I want us to be mindful of this. And Holy Spirit, just captivate our attention right now. Holy Spirit, just captivate our minds. Lord, just anoint our ears to hear right now, Holy Spirit, and anoint our hearts to receive. The Lord speaks to us in many different ways. And the reason why he does that is because we're bad as Christians not getting into this book enough. Oh, you ain't going to shout me down on that point. Come on, somebody. But that's all right because the Lord knew that. So you know what? He uses different avenues and venues to speak to us. Hmm. He knew we were going to have a problem with self-discipline and spiritual discipline and making sure we have plenty of time in the Word. So he speaks through different 
avenues and venues. He speaks through the Logos, obviously, His Word. But God will speak and warn us through many different ways. He will use signs in the heavens, the sun, the moon, and the stars, just as we have seen this very past week. Now, I'm going to make a very bold statement right here, so I don't want you to freak out on me. But can I tell you everything that God is going to say hasn't been said yet? Now, this word, the Logos, is the ultimate authority. And it doesn't get any better than this. We can't add to it. We can't take it away. But can I tell you, prophetically speaking, as it pertains to the ends of to the end of this dispensation and as it pertains to the last days God has not said everything yet he's still speaking he's still speaking look at your neighbor and say he's still speaking can I tell you all we know isn't all there is to know and I'm going to give you a Bible for this in a minute just hang on all we know isn't all there is to know there's more to come there's more revelation to come now, that's not to say that it will contradict the Word of God, because if it does, then it's not of God. Come on, somebody. But everything hasn't been revealed to us yet, and we can prove that by the Word of God. Look at this, what Apostle Paul told the church at Corinth here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Some of you were really getting nervous right there. You're thinking, man, what's, what's, what's Pastor Steve saying? But look at this. It's Word. It's the Word. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 and 10. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when? Everybody say, but when. Not if, but when. That which is perfect. And how many know there was only one perfect? His name is Jesus. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. So it's obvious that we don't know everything. We don't know everything there is to know. And that's why, spiritually speaking, we must keep our ear to the ground. What is God saying? Where is the Holy Spirit leading us in these last days? Look what Jesus said through John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 3, verse 6. And how many understand John the Revelator would have never been John the Revelator if he was not first John the Beloved? Intimacy produces revelation. Remember that if you want revelation. Revelation chapter 3, verse number 6, he who has an ear, reach up and touch your ear. Can I tell you that's not the ear he's talking about? He's talking about your in, inward spirit man ear. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so, if the Lord was speaking to the seven churches of Revelation, in which case he was, then that means he's still speaking to you and I, the church of today, because we're still in the very same church age. Remember what we've said throughout this series. There is no amen at the book of Acts. And what that means is we're still in the church age. And if God ever spoke in the church age, which he did, then that, guess what? He's still speaking. He's still speaking. How many see it? How many understand 2 plus 2 equals 4? Unless you're talking about my age, then I'm 38. <laughs> but you see, the reason why we must fight against spiritual laziness, the reason why we must fight against spiritual complacency is this verse right here. Look at this in Amos chapter 3, verse number 7. How many know it's the tendency of the flesh to get spiritually lazy? Amen? Amen. Get spiritual comfort, complacent. That's what this challenge this whole month of August has been about. We said it was a war on complacency. But look at this. This is why we need to be uh, stirring ourselves up and putting our ear to the ground, so to speak. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely. Everybody say surely. surely. In other words, undoubtedly. Surely the Lord God does what? Nothing. nothing. Do we get that? Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his what? His secret to his servants, the prophets. The Lord God does nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And so that's why I challenge our prophets to hear, from, to hear from the Lord, to hear what God is speaking. And not only to hear, but to speak it. 
How many know it doesn't do us any good if, if somebody receives a word from the Lord, but they don't speak it and share it? So if the Lord gives you something, share it with us. So understand it's not only important to hear, but speak. God does nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And that's why we need spiritual hearing. That's why we need the mind of Christ. That's why we need to keep our focus and our attention on God because he's not done speaking. I want us to understand that. God is still speaking. God is still speaking. But you see, too many times as humans, because how many know we're very human? How many humans do we have here today? Man, I'm very human. Too many times we are looking for the obvious. We're looking for the obvious thing to manifest itself in the natural realm before we will believe. But can I tell you, once it manifests itself, chances are it's probably too late to prepare for it. What if we could know things before they even happened? Come on, somebody. Am I talking to somebody who believes this or not? What if we knew things were going to happen before they happened? And I believe we can if we learn to recognize the voice of God. What did, what did Jesus say in the word? My sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. So God is speaking, but the question is, are we listening? And that's why the devil distracts us with so many things. Because he doesn't want us to be still. He'll hear that still, small voice. Now, I, I will go as far as to say this. God is probably speaking more now than he ever has. And there's a whole different reason, a bunch of reasons for that, but I just simply believe God is speaking more now than he ever has. One is obviously because we're coming to the end. The culmination of all things is upon us. But look at this. This is another reason right here. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, and we've used this verse throughout our series. Daniel chapter 12, verse number 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time or the season of the end. And the end is going to look like this. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. That's the day and age in which we live. We talked about it during this series. The microchip is already here. The technology is already here. So what this verse right here in Daniel tells us is the fact that there, there, there are words that are shut up that will not be released until the time of the end. And so what that means to us is we can't live off of yesterday's manna. Come on, somebody. We can't live off of yesterday's manna. As the last day's church who are actually going to birth and see the close of this dispensation, we can't live on old revelation. But we need a fresh word from the Lord. We need a fresh vision. We need an on-time word. I wish somebody would help me preach this morning. We need a rhema word of God, a dust saith the Lord. This is what's going to happen. This is where you're headed. This is what I need you to do. How many know we need orders from headquarters this morning? There's a million and one things we could be doing as the church, but what does God want FGEC to do right here, right now? That's what we need. We need clear and precise marching orders, directions, orders from headquarters. Look at your neighbor this morning. Tell him we need a word from the Lord. Nothing that contradicts the word of God, but something that clarifies the word of God. Something that removes that type and shadow. Come on, somebody. So something that removes only that part knowledge. We begin to see the fullness of all things. That rhema word that once you get it, the light bulb comes on and say, oh yeah, now I get it. How many love it when those rhema words come to you? Amen. Now quickly, let me say this before we watch this video here. Don't forget this point because this is really important. Don't forget the point that the last days actually began 2,000 years ago. 
The last days actually began when the church age began on the day of Pentecost. The age of grace, the church age, or the Holy Ghost dispensation, which are all the, this dispensation in which we live, they all represent the last days. And when the church age began on the day of Pentecost, the last days officially began. It's when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the 120 in the upper room and the disciples were born into apostles. They were transformed into apostles. How many know if we're going to do what God has called us to do, we got to be transformed into something that we're not? How many know you can impart something you don't possess yourself? And how many know you don't possess anything unless it possesses you first? Come on, somebody. I feel like preaching this morning. Got to get a hold of this. If the disciples needed a transforming and they were with Jesus 24-7, how many know you and I need a transformation? That's what God is doing. He's transforming His church. He's restoring His church. And so if the last days actually began 2,000 years ago, what that means to us here today in 2017 is this. These are the last of the last days. Let's watch this video. Real quick. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We will, we will repost this on Facebook. And then I have another video. Uh, I wish we had time to watch it, but it's a little longer. It's about 35 minutes, and we will post that as well. I encourage you to watch both of them. But it's going to happen. The bottom line is it's going to happen. If he uh, came the first time, in which case we all know he did, then he's coming the second time. He's coming back again. Amen. Listen to this. We're going to close this out here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36 and 37. For you have need of endurance. Everybody say endurance. How many understand the race that we're running isn't a sprint, but it's a marathon? For you, need, you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. In closing, I want to say this. Um, the reason why I love the end times message is because it motivates us to live right. It causes us to have a burden for the lost. Or should I say, it should. It should. The problem is, as human beings, we get too comfortable down here. Living life, making a living, doing our thing. And we get kind of in a routine. We get in a rut. But can I tell you, church, this world is not our home. Okay? This world is not our home. And we need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded of that. The bottom line is this. It really doesn't matter if the rapture happens this September. It really doesn't matter if the tribulation begins this fall. But what really matters is, are we ready? Are you ready? Am I ready? You see, any one of us here today could leave this on the way home, die in a car wreck. God forbid if that happens. But what's of dire importance is, are we living ready? How many understand we're only one heartbeat? We're only one breath away from eternity. None of us here today are promised tomorrow. None of us, not the youngest, not the healthiest, not the wealthiest, none of us are promised tomorrow. Now quickly, in closing, I'm closing, wrapping all this up. Look here in Daniel chapter 2, verse number 20 and 21. Our last few scriptures here of this series. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of our God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he, and this who is God, he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. How many understand that here in the United States of America, we have a new king or president? And his name is what? Trump. Trump. Everybody say Trump. Isn't it amazing that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 52 says, King James does. King James you have to pull up the King James, guys. I'm sorry. 
1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last what? The last what? Why did they choose to call it a trump and not a trumpet? Why did he use the wording in a moment in the twinkling eye of the last trump? Hmm. Well, guess what? That's going to lead us to our next message. We could continue on with this series, I'm telling you right now. But I feel released in my spirit. And we're going to close this. But let's say in the next few weeks sometime, we're going to be bringing a message specifically about President Donald J. Trump. And you don't want to miss that. But I am truly convinced that the seasons have changed. How many feel like something has shifted? How many already feel fall in the air? And it's a month before fall gets here. Come on, somebody. Mm. You see, I truly believe that the eclipse on Monday was a defining moment of this closing church age. Now, I want to do something here today as we conclude this series. And uh, Brother Kevin, Brother James, Brother Darvez, if you would come and divide these up, I want everybody, everybody to get one. If we don't have enough copies, we'll go make copies. And uh, some of you might find this a little humorous. And it is somewhat humorous, but I'm very, I'm dead serious about it. But this is what it reads, and I will read it to you, and you will keep this. I thought about have you sign it in and turn it back in, but yeah, I think it would be best if you keep it. You probably need to keep it in your study or on your fridge. But it's an official waiver, an official waiver. Make sure these preachers get one up here too. They, they need one. In the months of July and August of 2017, Pastor Steve Owens has presented to the congregation of FGEC a sermon series entitled Signs of the Times. Pastor Steve has done a little bit of everything to try and convince us that we are living in the last of the last days. He's played videos, handed out flyers, made us take notes. He has stomped, snorted, and yelled. How many can say amen to that? Four quotation marks. Now it's up to me what I do with this information. Pastor Steve will not have my blood on his hands because he has told me the truth and warned me of what's to come. Maybe you will sign and give it back to me. No, I want you to keep it. In signing this waiver, I release Pastor Steve of any liability if I choose not to believe. Do you like that? <laughs> now, it's funny, but it's the truth. Because I want you to know that it's the last of the last days. And I know I hear the buzz. Oh, Pastor Steve, you can't say things like this. You can't keep showing videos like this because what if the rapture doesn't happen this fall? Or what if the tribulation doesn't start? Eventually it's going to get here. And I would rather us be aware of the fact and be living ready. And this whole rapture thing, honey, don't, don't think you got this thing down about the rapture. That it's going to happen mid-trib or post-trib. It might just happen pre-trib. So you better live ready. You just better live ready. I better live ready. And like we've already said, even if we don't go by the way of the tribulation, we're not promised tomorrow. So I'm going to share this video again with, with you on Facebook, and then I have another video that Sister Colleen shared with me. It is very powerful. It talks about the Revelation 12 sign coming up on September 23rd. It's, a, it's amazing. It's amazing. And we already know what the Lord has been telling us of those who have been praying and fasting about September. It's going to be a September to remember. How many know September is the ninth month of the year? And how many know what, what happens to a pregnant woman in the ninth month? How many know right before the baby comes, the water breaks? How many know the hurricane might be a sign that the water's breaking? Come on, somebody. The baby's soon to follow. It's all coming together. 
Remember what Jesus said in, man, I got to quit. I could keep going, can you tell? Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. When you see all of these things come together. What's the greatest sign we've seen? The nation of Israel being reborn. And what Jesus say about that generation? That generation will not pass till all these things come to pass. And we're out of here. All right, I, gotta leave, I can't leave you hanging like that. i got to leave one more scripture with you. This is my last one, Acts. You say, well, is it just the, com- the second coming and the rapture of the church? There's nothing to come before that? Oh, no, there is. It's right here. And we brought it out a couple weeks ago. It's in Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. This is what I want you and I, the church, to look forward to. It says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing... Everybody shout refreshing. Refreshing, refreshing means renewal, revival, restoration, reconciliation. So that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that He may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you, before, whom heaven must receive, or in other words, hold, until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. This is what I believe. I believe we have a short, short window, a short, short window of opportunity to do some great things before Jesus calls us out of here. And I believe The church is going to be restored to that Pentecostal apostolic power and authority. And before we leave here, the world is going to know that the church of the living God was here. Can somebody say amen? Stand to your feet. I got to quit. Mm. Let Let me share this. Oh, my goodness. I could just keep going. One of the many things I've I've studied these past few weeks and seen and heard. Remember the scripture that says an adulteress and a wicked generation seeks after a sign. No sign shall be given to that, but that to the sign of Jonah. Do you understand that there was an eclipse at the time that Jonah went to Nineveh and warned them? There was an eclipse back. The sign of Jonah was an eclipse. I'm telling you, the eclipse we just viewed Monday was not just an eclipse. It was a sign. And church, if you can't feel this, then your feeler is dead. Your feeler is broken. If you can't sense this in your spirit. I mean, I just got goosebumps watching that video. When that trumpet began to sound. Yeah, how many can say, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come on, we, come on. I know it's a little late, but it's all right. Can we just come and we, we're going to, we're not only going to close out this service today, but we're closing out this series. And we're also closing out the August challenge. Now, hopefully you have been praying and fasting and seeking the face of God in this month. But let me present a question to you. Since the month of August is coming to a close, do we just quit now? Do we just give up? Do we go back to church as usual? Or do we continue to push? Do we continue to pray and fast and seek the face of God? Moms, how many know that there's a point of the delivery process when they ain't got to encourage you to push. That baby's coming whether the doctor's ready or not. How many know what I'm talking about? Sometimes they, you get so far into that, they even can't give you, a, a, what, an epidural or whatever. It's too late. You just got to go with it. Church, can I tell you, we're getting to that point where God's getting in a hurry. God's getting in a hurry. And listen, I know, I know some of you have heard this your whole life, that Jesus is soon to return. Jesus is soon to return. But can I tell you, there's coming a day when we're going to hear about it for the last time. And listen, 
If we as the church aren't excited about it, how do we expect the world to be excited about it? So you know what? Do what you got to do. Get your priorities in order. Get rid of the distractions. Come on, somebody. How many know what I'm talking about? Get your house in order. Get your house. Do what you got to do. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, just do what you got to do, honey. Do what you need to do. Because this thing is about to wrap up. The culmination of all things. The synergy of the ages. The close of a dispensation. Time isn't exploding. Time is imploding. That was the vision you got about the hourglass and the sand and only a few grains left. Can we just lift our hands and thank God for divine revelation right now? I feel an impartation of divine revelation right here. Some of us are seeing it for the first time right here, right now. Come on. Just thank Him and praise Him.